not okay to cave and convert is in our relationship with God. Now I know every one of you in here today will, will claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ and, and claim that you have strong faith. And I pray that that's true. And I pray that no matter what happens, no matter what the people around you engage in and how they get involved in, in things of this world, I pray that when it comes down to the time when your faith is tested by fire, that you have faith to face the fire. I think that, that God has been, been speaking to us lately through the things that, that he's even been giving me to preach and, and the sermons that he's given me that, folks, I, I, looking across our nation, if God doesn't make some changes, our faith is gonna continue to be tested. People around us are gonna continue to, to convert and, and to accept and to take on new false religions and to worship false gods. And it's important that we take the things that God gives us in his word and we understand that we have to grow, we have to mature, we have to reach out to others, and we have to be strong in our faith and be prepared when temptation comes. This morning, God has given us a story in the book of Daniel, chapter three, of three men who had real faith. Three who had the faith to face the fire. And as we look at it this morning, I pray that you'll look at that and you'll compare that to your daily walk, to what you're dealing with today, what you dealt with last week, and what we could be facing in the future. And ask yourself today, do you have faith to face the fire? I'm so thankful that as we're going to read through this today, again in Daniel chapter 3, that we understand that while we are looking at a record of something that occurred a long time ago, that today... All around the world, people are, are facing opportunities to stand strong for the kingdom of God. Turn your news on and look at the things that are going on. There are people being murdered and beheaded simply because they refuse to turn away from God and, and resort to some false religion created by man. You know, I, I wasn't there and I haven't seen all the evidence, but we're now seeing things happening right here in America where people have been beheaded, possibly because they chose not to convert to a false religion. Guys, we gotta be strong in our faith. We gotta look at things like God's giving us here today to encourage us and understand that no matter what we go through, God's there with us and that we have to have faith to face the fire. And we're gonna read the the whole chapter, it's a, it's a lot of scripture there, but, but God really just, he gives the whole story. We could really just, just read it and take it in and, and stop right there. So I don't want to miss anything and, and cheat you by not reading the whole thing. So I hope you'll bear with me. But we're going to read through Daniel chapter 3, beginning in verse 1. <clears throat> it says, Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold, the height of which was 60 cubits, and it's width 6 cubits. He set up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent word to assemble the satraps, the prefects, and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the judges, the magistrates, and all the rulers of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Then the satraps and the prefects and the governors and the counselors and the treasurers, the judges and the magistrates and all the rulers of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. They stood before them, they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, to you the command is given, O peoples, nations, and men of every language, that at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the trigon, the psaltery, the bagpipe, and all kinds of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, has set up. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. Therefore, at the time when all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the trigon, the psaltery, the bagpipe, and all the kinds of music, all the peoples, nations, and men of every language fell down and worshiped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. For this reason, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and brought charges against the Jews. They responded and said to Nebuchadnezzar the king, O king, live forever. 
You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the trigon, the psaltery, the bagpipe, and all kinds of music is to fall down and worship the golden image. But whoever does not fall down and worship shall be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the administration of the province of Babylon, namely Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have disregarded you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in rage and anger, in rage and anger gave orders to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then these men were brought before the king. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I've set up? Now, if you are ready, at the moment you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the trigon, the psaltery, and the bagpipe, and all kinds of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made very well. But if you do not worship, you will immediately be cast into the midst of a furnace of blazing fire. And what God is there who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to give you an answer concerning this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he does not, let it be known to you, O king, that we are not going to serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was filled with wrath, wrath and his facial expression was altered toward Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He answered by giving orders to heat the furnace seven times more than it was usually heated. Then he commanded certain valiant warriors who were in his army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in order to cast them into the furnace of blazing fire. Then these men were tied up in their trousers, their coats, their caps, and their other clothes and were cast into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire. For this reason, because the king's command was urgent and the furnace had been made extremely hot, the flame of the fire slew these men who carried up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But these three men... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fell into the midst of the furnace of blazing fire, still tied up. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and stood up in haste. He said to his high officials, was it not three men we cast into the midst of the fire? They replied to the king, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men loosed and walking about in the midst of the fire without harm. And the appearance of the fourth is like the son of the gods. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the door of the furnace of blazing fire. He responded and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out, you servants of the most high God, and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the midst of the fire. The satraps the prefects, the governors, and the king's high officials gathered around and saw in regard to these men that the fire had no effect on the bodies of these men, nor was the hair of their head singed, nor were their trousers damaged, nor had the smell of fire even come upon them. Nebuchadnezzar responded and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who put their trust in him, violating the king's command and yielded up their bodies so as not to serve or worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that any people, nation, or tongue that speaks anything offensive against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses reduced to a rubbish heap inasmuch as there is no other god who is able to deliver in this way. Then the king called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to prosper in the province of Babylon. We have an awesome God, amen? amen. An awesome God. And I think it's so awesome to, to see that, that even Nebuchadnezzar, here he is, he's basically just reaching out in, in, a, in another way to, to show his power and to make people worship this, this idol that, that he's created and there we see recorded in, in God's word 
he begins to talk about how amazing the one true God is and that there's no other God that can do the things that God did. And what faith, what faith did these men have that they would stand there knowing what was about to happen? And they stood true. They held their faith in God. Again, I remind you today that there are people all over the world that are facing some of the same stuff today. And I don't know, I can't predict the future, but I know we have to be prepared because it could happen right here. It could happen in our lives. And we have to be prepared to have faith to face the fire. Now, there are some things I want us to look at here as we consider the example that, that they were and how God can speak to us to that. And the first thing I want us to see that is their temptation. Their temptation. Now, now Nebuchadnezzar had set up an idol that was, it was 90 feet tall and nine foot wide. And, and these false idols that would be created like that, it said it was golden, they would create things to be big and, and flamboyant, again, and, and forcing people to, to worship them. They were told they, they, they had to do this. And again, I think this was just another way of, of the king extending his, his power and, and oppressing people even in their worship and their religion. But these people, they, these three, there, there had to be some temptation there. They had to be tempted to protect their position. To protect their position, it says that they had been set over the affairs of the province of Babylon. As government officials over the affairs of Babylon and then to, to stand right there in front of the king and not do what he's telling them to do, it was very likely they were gonna lose their position. If somehow they lived through this, it was very likely that, that they would lose that, that esteem they had of, of being someone important and, and being in charge and being in control and it's very likely that they drew a good check for that. As they face this, would they be able to, to stand there and, and face the temptation of losing their position? They ask you today. Now there's a lot of corruption in our world today, right here in our country. There's corruption in our government. There's corruption in the private sector, all around. Maybe there's corruption, maybe there's an opportunity gonna present itself to you, whether you work for the government or you work for a private company. Maybe there's something that's gonna present itself in front of you where you have the opportunity to prosper or to maintain your position if you're just willing to give in and stray a little to the side, or, or maybe it's even you're being called to, to turn your back and say, well, I understand that, you know, my boss is, is doing some things that, that he probably shouldn't ought to be doing. I think what he's doing is probably even a, a crime. It may even be, I'm pretty sure it's a felony because there's a lot of money. But that's not my business. If I just turn my back, there's a good chance that he's going to even continue to excel. And he knows I know. And if I just turn my back, then he's probably going to promote me up and he's going to give me a bigger check. Folks, there's been a lot of people in our country that have been tempted that way, that have given in to that temptation. There's been a lot of Christians whose faith was not strong enough to face the fire that gave in to that temptation. Folks, we need to look at what God did through these three men, at what God did through their faith. And we need to stand strong in our faith. And we don't need to worry about our position in anything but the kingdom of God. And just to be a part of that is good enough for me. This morning, is your faith strong enough to forget about your position in this world? These guys were not only tempted to protect their position, but I believe they were tempted to silence the voice of God. You know, as children of God, when, when we fall into temptation, and I know you hear it, when we fall into temptation, God, it, it's right there in front of us. God starts speaking to us. Y'all heard that before? You see something you know you're not supposed to do it and you're hearing, don't do that. Don't, don't fall off in there. There's no doubt that, that these men who worship God 
had an opportunity there to forget everything that, that they ever heard of or, or knew about God and, and just make the king happy, go along with what he wanted, and forget all that. They were tempted to simply si silence the voice of God in their life. They could have maybe even rationalized to their self and said, you know what? I may, I may bow on the outside and, and bow to this thing that the king said, but I'm not doing that on the inside. But they knew that that's not what God would have them to do. Folks, when you're out there in the world and temptation comes along, maybe sometimes it's, you have to look at that opportunity where you could prosper if you're willing to, to silence that small, still voice of the, the Holy Spirit that begins to speak to you that says, turn and run and get out of here. Maybe it's that opportunity of just saying, I just don't want to get involved and I'll just go along with this and I'll just do what they want me to do. I don't really mean it, but I'll just do what they're telling me to do. Folks, you can't silence the voice of God in your life. If you have a, a relationship with Jesus Christ, the Bible teaches us that, that God has placed the Holy Spirit in your life. And if you're out there and you're engaging in some kind of sin or, or you're being tempted by God in some way, understand that thing that's, that's speaking to you, that voice that you hear, that's God himself. That's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit saying, run, flee. Here's how you get out of here. Don't silence the voice of God in your life. Today, Christians, Christians, our brothers and sisters in the family of God are being killed. Children are being assaulted in, in terrible ways that I can't even stand up here and talk about. People are being beheaded and, and filmed and, and shown all over the world because of their faith. But we, right here in America, we have more religious freedom right here to, to worship Almighty God than anybody else out there. But we, right here in, in America, we take that for granted. We have all sorts of, of opportunities to, to serve God and to listen to that voice of God in our, in our heart, and we just silence it sometimes. We take for granted the, the freedoms that we have to come here and, and worship just like you're doing right now. It is a privilege to come to the house of God and to worship him. There are people out there that would give every worldly possession that they have to be able to do what you're doing right now. Don't take for granted the things of God and don't take for granted that, that voice of God that's speaking to you. And when temptation comes along and you're tempted to, to stray from the things of God and, and stray from being who God would have you to be and stray from glorifying God through your actions, don't give in to temptation. Listen to that voice. Listen to God crying out to you. And then react and do what God's given you. This morning, let me ask you, I don't think any one of you, I haven't seen you on the news, I don't think any one of us here today has faced that situation where we've been asked to deny God, deny his existence, deny our relationship with him. But what if, what if you get put in that position? Will you bow before a false god and say, I'm just bowing on the outside? I don't really mean it. I mean, stop and think about that. We've talked about, we all have, we've had those conversations about what could happen here in our own country. Again, we don't know what the future holds. I have faith in God that no matter what happens, he's still going to be on the throne. He's still the king of king, the Lord of lords. So I'm, I'm not going to sit and, and, and worry about it, but, but we do have to be prepared. When that time comes, are, are you willing that no matter what the consequences, here's three men who, there's no doubt, they could feel that furnace and they could feel the fire. It's now been turned up seven times hotter than normal. They can feel that heat. And they said, it doesn't matter. We're not going to deny our God. Our God can save us. And even if he chooses not to, we're still not going to deny our God and worship your false idol. 
Folks, today, right here in America, right here in our community, there are are so many different kind of false religions out there. You can worship anything you want. If you want to worship a rock, a tree, whatever, there are people there that will help you do that and encourage you to do it. But there is only one true religion. There's only one true God, and that's the God in heaven, the God of, of this book, the God of Israel, the Father of Jesus. This morning, we have to pray that God will give us the faith to strengthen our faith to face the fire. Every day, Satan's after us. Every day, Satan wants to tempt you. This morning, I pray that your faith is strong. These guys could have easily just went ahead and said, you know what, King, I don't know what they were telling you, but you know us. We're going to do what you tell us to do. And they could have just got down on their knees right there. And on the inside, they could have been talking to God saying, God, you know, we don't mean this. We're just trying to stay alive. And who knows how we're going to prosper through this. You know what? Had they done that, what would they have been giving up? They'd been giving up their testimony. Their testimony. These guys had one of the most awesome testimonies recorded in the Bible. What an awesome testimony to stand there and to stay strong to God. In in, in verses 17 and 18, basically, they said, "Our, our God who we serve is strong enough to deliver us out of anything you put in front of us. And even if he don't, we're still not serving your false God. We're going to stand strong and have faith in the only God. What a testimony. This morning, is your faith that strong? See, folks are watching us. Folks are watching to to see, and as darkness continues to to move here in our country and bad things continue to happen, people are watching you to see how you respond. What kind of testimony do you have? How are you being used in the kingdom of God? These guys showed that, that they had faith in the power of God. They had faith in the power of God. They said, you know what, throw us in there. God can deliver us. They had faith, and they stayed true to that faith. Let me ask you this morning, how strong is your faith? Maybe some of you are, maybe you're already there, and and you're at the, the worst place in a storm that you've ever been. Where's your, where's your faith at today? God's still there. What if today, what if you walk out of here today to find out that everything that you own is gone? Maybe your bank account's been emptied. You've lost your job. Maybe your home has been burned to the ground. You've lost a loved one. Where's your faith? Maybe things continue to get bad. Maybe mainstream America continues to ignore God and Christianity comes to a point where it's outlawed. What if it comes to a point where they say, if we catch you with a Bible, we're going to throw you in a fiery pit. Are you going to discard God's word? What if they pass a law that it is is a felony punishable by death to attend a worship service where the name of Jesus is preached? How many people will show up to the church? How many people will deny their relationship with Christ? Folks, God hadn't put on my heart that any of that's going to happen, but he has put on my heart that we got to have strong faith. we got to have faith no matter what happens, no matter what we're going through, no matter where you are today. Understand today, God's still on his throne. He's still the, the creator of all the world. None of that has changed. These guys also in their testimony showed that they had true obedience to God's will. They said, if God chooses to save us, or even if he doesn't, we're going to follow his will. His will was for them to have a a testimony for him. They said they'd rather burn than turn. Is your faith that strong? Do you have a, a faith that is strong enough that your testimony shows that that you're willing to be obedient to God's will in your life. 
Maybe God's putting you in a situation, and his will is to use you in that situation. Maybe you're going through something today, and God says, I want you, I'm going to let you go through this so that you can exalt and glorify my name and how you respond in this situation. We've got to have faith and be obedient to God's will. Again, our, our country is changing. The demoralization of America is growing every day. And there is no doubt in my mind you've already had them and you're going to continue to have opportunities to exhibit your testimony to a lost and dying world, to people that need Jesus. And they're going to look at you and they're going to see how obedient you are to the will of God in your life. We can have a real testimony if we continue to show people that our faith is in the shed blood of Jesus Christ and that we live in his strength. Understand today that no matter where you are today or where you are next week, Jesus said he would never leave us. The Bible says that we can do all things in his strength. This morning, I encourage you to remember that. Have faith to face the fire. If you, maybe this morning, I know some of you are going through some tough places. Maybe this morning you're, you're in the pits. You're not alone. These men were not alone. And because they were not alone there, we saw their victory. So the last thing I want you to see there is, is their victory. Here they were that, that they were, were cast into a furnace because they, they wouldn't convert. They wouldn't give in. They, they wouldn't just go along with what everybody wanted them to do. But because they wouldn't give in, they had victory. The fire had no power. Understand today that the, the, the things of man, the, the wrath of man is absolutely useless against the power of Almighty God. So no matter what it is that you're facing today that, that Satan has put out there or, or man has put you in, it has no power against God. And if you have a relationship with Jesus Christ in your life, just sit back and say, okay, God, I know you're here with me. Walk me through this. God, I want, I want my testimony to be one that others can look at me and see my relationship in you and the faith that I had in you. And I, I want it to be one that makes others want what I got. These guys potentially faced some suffering. Had they been thrown in that fire and it had been God's will to let that fire consume them, they would have certainly faced some suffering. And because they were willing to face that suffering, they experienced a new freedom. It says that Nebuchadnezzar said, Lo, I see four men loosed and walking in the midst of the fire. They're certainly walking around in a Fiery furnace was a, a new thing for them. They probably had never done that, probably never did that again. But because they had faith to, to face that fire, they experienced the ability to, to go in and, and to walk around in there. They experienced real glory in what could have been a, a terrible time for them. What's awesome, and I, and I want you to understand this morning, is they weren't saved from that pit. You see, they stood up and they had faith to face the fire and God didn't just reach in and, and stop them from being thrown in that pit. He let them go through the fire. But they were saved in the fire and they were taken care of in the fire and they were protected by God Almighty. So understand today that you may be going through something or maybe you're gonna go through something. God will protect you in that. And just, just as King Nebuchadnezzar saw a fourth person in there, you're not alone. You never go through this alone. God is there with you. Understand this morning that the peace, you know, in, in, in John 14, 1, Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Jesus promised us a peace here in this world. And even though we go through tough times, even though we face evil people and evil situations, and we go through fiery pits sometimes, 
it can't take away your peace. There is nothing here that's mightier than the power of God. And if God has promised you peace, you can maintain that peace. Look, for, look to God for that peace in your situation. Stand strong in your faith in the face of the fire. Understand also that fire purifies. Remember that? Fire purifies. You don't purify some gold. How do we do that? We, we melt it with fire. Sometimes we go through situations. Not necessarily that God put us there, but God does allow. Nothing happens that he doesn't allow. Sometimes we go through situations that can truly purify us. Situations that can bring us closer to God. Sometimes the, the fire itself can, can actually burn the cords that bind us to sin. So this morning, if you're, if you're going through the fire, understand that there you can experience freedom and you can also experience a new fellowship. Again, King Nebuchadnezzar said that he, he looked in there and he, he saw a, a fourth person, a form that, that looked like the son of God. Here these people are thrown in the fiery pit and their communion with, with Jesus at that time is, is so close. It's so real that others look in and they see a fourth person. Understand today that as we go through the fire that you're not alone. Understand that Jesus is right there with you. And it can be a time as you learn to rely more upon him, it can be a time that you have a whole new communion with Christ that you've never experienced before in your life. Again, today, I pray that you'll listen to that and that that'll be deep in your mind. If you're already there or you're, you're going to go through it in the weeks or months or years ahead, understand that when we go through these times that, that we can have a whole new relationship with Christ, a new communion. Understand today that our country... I love our country, and I still believe there are a lot of patriotic Christians out there. But a large portion of our country has become so self-righteous, and self-righteous in the blessings that God has given us that they have reached a point where they think we don't need God at all anymore. And if we look in God's word, and we look in history books, and we see nations that were blessed by God and made mighty through his will, that came to that point where they wanted to turn to him, we see that quite often he lets them go into the fire to bring them back. Again, I don't know what's in store for us, but I know today that I would much rather, I would much rather us enter into that deep communion today and let that new fellowship with Christ begin to grow right here, right now, while we're, maybe we're not even in the fire than to have to wait and force God's hand to let us go into the fire. So maybe today your relationship with Christ is, is, is not one that's been growing. Folks, he's given us this week after week. Maybe you haven't been growing. Maybe you haven't been drawing closer to him. Maybe you haven't been real with him. Maybe you haven't been getting into his word. Today, just give it over to him and say, God, I want to know you more. I want to fellowship with you more. I want you back in control of my life. I'm tired of trying it on my own. Allow God to become new in your life. The last thing I want you to see in, in that as they went through the fire, that they also, they had a new opportunity for service. In verse 30, it said that the king actually promoted them. Here they were, they were already in positions over Babylon, but it says that the king promoted them. A lot of times, and we've talked about this, a lot of times we go through situations that can cause us to be even better used by God. Maybe you're experiencing something in your life today that someone else, maybe somebody else sitting right here in this room is going to go through in the near future. What opportunity you'll have to go to them and tell them how God worked in your life and how he was the strength to get you through. This morning I am I am so thankful 
that even when man set up this big golden image for them to worship, that these three men said, not going to happen. We serve the one true God. And we have faith to face your fire. And we know that he can reach down right now and he can save us. And today, if it's his will, we, we have faith enough that if that's not his will to, to rescue us today, but he'd rather us go in there and, and exhibit our faith and let us be burned up, we're going to do that too. I'm so thankful that was recorded for us and that God can speak to us today in that. When it comes time, whether it's through some other religion forcing itself upon you and offering you an opportunity to deny and convert, we stand strong. Or maybe it's something this week in the workplace where you have an opportunity to be God's bright light in this dark world. We shine for him. Maybe today you're here and, and you're in the pits. Understand that Jesus is there with you. He loves you so much. He would never leave you alone. And it's his will for you to be here today and be encouraged by his word. There's no doubt in my mind. Some people argue about who that fourth person was. There's no doubt in my mind that was Jesus. And he's right there in your life. And he's right there with you. Take this time to have a new fellowship with him. And for those of you that are here today and, and you never said yes to Jesus, understand today that, that God loves you. And all these things that are out there that are offering you other opportunities to, and, and all kinds of the promises of man, understand none of that stuff's going to last. None of that stuff brings a real peace. It's all temporary. But today God stands before you and says that I love you and I sent my son Jesus to die on the cross for you. And today I promise you an eternal peace, an eternal peace that is for here and now and for eternity. And God did that in the free gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And all you have to do today, it's not about you reaching some better status on your own or, or getting some sin out of your life. God will change all that. The Bible teaches us that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become a new creation. It's my prayer today. If there's just one person here today that doesn't know Jesus, that you won't walk out of this place. Because I'm going to tell you, I wouldn't want to go off in that fire on my own. If God's speaking to your heart today in any way, I pray that you'll respond to him. Would you pray with me?